April the 15th, 2014. The time is 7 p.m. and the regular meeting of the Greensburg Board of Zoning Appeals is called to order. Would you all rise and face the flag and say the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. John, would you call the roll, please? Evan? Here. Steve? Here. Jim? Here. Roy? Here. David? Here. Okay. <clears throat> it's present. You were emailed a copy of the minutes of the March 26, 2014 meeting. Did anybody see anything that needed to be changed or corrected? I myself did not. But here in, uh, I have one question. Yes, sir. In the case of uh, like three, four, or two against, is it necessary to put down two voted for and two voted against? Is it okay? I don't know, Chris. What's the? Uh, it's not necessary to, unless there was a request for a roll call vote. It's not necessary to indicate who voted which way. Um, it's just it is sufficient to say that it was three, four, or two against. Now, in the instance of roll call vote, then we actually need to indicate how each member voted. Yeah, we did have a roll call vote, so I guess we should change that. Then. The two, to change that to David and I were against, and uh, Kevin and Steve and Jim were for. So if you make that change to the minutes, then I would entertain a motion that we would approve the minutes as corrected. The motion has been made. Do I have a second? Second. Motion's been made and seconded to approve the minutes from March 26th meeting. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, they're approved. <coughs> On to the first order of business this evening, Mr. Charles Lee. The petitioner is requesting that the front yard setback be reduced from 25 feet to 16 feet and the rear yard setback from 30 to 20 for the remaining undeveloped lots in Kirkwood Creek. This subject property is zoned R2. And I believe that is a total of 17? 17, 17 lots. Could I have your name for the record, please? I suppose uh, you're speaking for Mr. Lee. I'm Andy Scholey, speaking for Charles and Ralph Lee, who own the remaining undeveloped lots out there, Crooked Creek. Um, they met with Gary several times. Uh, we approached you guys last sometime last year where they had a house they lined it up with the front of the other the neighboring house the neighboring house was in violation of the setback and that we had to ask you guys for a variance for that which you granted um, looking at the original subdivision plan being its own r2 most 16 of the 17 lots are in the inside loop of that subdivision and when this subdivision was done, all those lots are 85 feet deep. So with a 30-foot rear setback, 25-foot front setback, that only leaves 30 feet of buildable space on those lots. And that gets pretty tight. You know, you can put a house there, but sometimes people want you know, a little addition or something that might jog out or not just a straight rectangular shaped house. That's kind of why we're asking for this, this variance. Um, it would just make it easier for, you know, the sale, sale of those remaining undeveloped lots if they had just a little bit more room. Um, 20 feet in the rear lots, um, it would not violate or encroach on any of the drainage easements that are shown on the subdivision plant. Um, guys have any questions? I mean, that's just... That's basically what the situation is. Yeah, I mean, they're just asking, instead of coming every time, it would just be, it would be easier for them to be able to sell a lot if they knew that, hey, we've got this much buildable space on the lots to try to finish up this subdivision. This subdivision was approved back in 2001, and are still... 17 lots that 
they're still trying to get houses on to you know, finish out that. Any questions from board members? Is there anyone here in the audience to speak on this petition? Kevin, do you want to state your name just for the record? Kevin Foster. I live on uh, Lot 35, which is on the inside of that area, and we're not opposed to it. One of the things that was mentioned in the letter that we received was all of the remaining lots that are on a 20-foot setback, whatever we want to adjust. Can we change that wording to every lot that's within there? Because my wife, Laura, and I have a pipe dream of adding onto the back of our garage someday and get a little more extra distance or even an extra playroom or something like that in our property. Can we include that to be including in our lot or is our lot grandfathered into what was already set by 2001 your, standards? Your situation, Kevin, correct me if I'm wrong here, Chris, but I think it would be you would have to come and petition us separately Okay. for your if you should want to add on to your garage or a play or whatever so right. you know, exactly. whatever it would be yours would be separate from from this what issue because is. okay. yours is already how it is now right. okay I mean, if you would so choose to exactly. add on then you would come before your own variance this then. and get your own variance okay 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 that answers our question then all right it's yours yeah thank you thank you anyone else Yes, ma'am. Could you state your name for the record, please? I'm Donna Stevens. This is my husband, Bobby. And we live right across the road from the subdivision. And um, we're just kind of curious why we received a letter in regard, because it doesn't seem to impact us. So I guess if you could tell me why we were notified. How, if you're within 100 feet of any of the properties requesting a variance, you got a letter. That's yeah, required that's, by the variance process okay yeah, and if this subdivision was laid out in 2001 they've had to know for all these years and I mean Andy you know where we live um, why why is it taken 14 years to figure out that these lots are that tight that I can't answer I don't know, From, I don't know. Uh, you know <clears throat> it's been that way I mean I've looked at some of the other houses and stuff that were built and I don't know if all those individual people came and got variances but if you look at the county's website it looks like there's possibly other existing structures out there that may not have been built in compliance with the current setbacks maybe they came in and got variances at the time of their construction I haven't looked into that so so you don't know how many people in the subdivision actually got a variance in order to build there's one Right now, I think there's only one. The rest of the people, uh, as far as I know, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Gary, but they're all within compliance except for the one that I don't in. know that. Okay. Per se. I have not gone out and measured every we, one okay. of them. And I, that, that's the reason. I, I know since I've been reviewing houses on lots, there's more than two built out there, and Mr. Lee and I worked diligently on one to make sure we got it set back far enough. He built that one after the one he came to you for. So, so we did approve. Only been those two constructed we did out there. approve the one basically because of the site. <clears throat> we did it because of sight line, the way it looked. Right. Um, it, it was with the other house. Right. It, was, it just made it. It just made sense if you went out there and looked. But that's as far. Now I don't know. Again, I don't measure every one of them or anything. But <clears throat> those porches don't count on that setback. So I know some of them. I have a front porch, and that doesn't count mm -hmm. as it for that setback. So it can be closer to this one. What about the garage? No, the garage would count. So the garage it should counts. be back. More than one. If it counts out more than a porch, then that should be back. Well, what the back porch of the home? Did that answer your question? Yes. All right. Miss Stevens, I'm sorry. Could you just your last name is it with a V or a PH? PH. Okay. Just not enough. Just thank you for just for our record, so. We the requirements haven't changed since I won. So no. In I won, they were the same as they are now. Yeah, that's, that's, my right. understanding. Yeah, that's my understanding. <clears throat> Scott. Where do I start? Um, a blanket for all the existing lots there 
I think if we look at doing that, we're going to open a big barrel of worms here. Um, basically, what Andy said was this way they could put a, maybe a bigger house on it. Well, if it was designed for a certain size house, now they're coming back wanting this variance to add a bigger house. Every developer in this community is going to come in now and ask to have their setbacks changed so that they can put bigger houses on theirs also. Uh, we have setbacks for a reason. You know, it's safety, it's, it's to build a community and so on. Again, we've done it on an individual basis, but we're looking at 17 lots here all at one time. Again, I'm going to guarantee you that every other developer in town is going to come in and want the same thing. And, you know, I can't help it if their houses aren't fitting. It calls for a certain size house. If that's not what the people want, then I can't help it that things have changed since 2001, since 2001 that they're wanting bigger houses or whatever. I, I don't know. But, you know, I can't help that. But I think we're going to make, we're, we as a city are going to do bad things if we allow this to happen. May, may I also have my concerns? Yes, sir. Uh, part of the, the variance process is to give adjoining property owners the opportunity to voice their opinion and then that, that's also why we as a have a rule of a year temporary variance followed by then a permanent variance well without knowing when these lots are going to sell how they're going to sell in what order you don't you have denied all of the other p property owners the opportunity to come in and voice their opinion in objection or an agreement with a, a, a given variance. You're simply saying at this point, we're doing this for all of these. And, and I believe that the process, you know, if you wanted to, to attempt to replat them, you could, right? I mean, there's nothing to stop you from replatting the, the current lots. Is that my understanding? I mean, it might, it, it would take a lot. It'd be a pain, it would be a pain, but you could conceivably replat the layout of the remaining lots. Could, you'd have to vacate is that right, Gary? Yeah, they hate the existing subdivision of the lots that they own and then replat, reconfigure to to, new to, lots. to allow that or just build smaller houses. Yeah. Right. That, those are my concerns as, as the city attorney, that, that you are denying future citizens the opportunity to voice an objection. Because after a year, this would become a permanent variance unless someone really showed up and, and voted on it. And you don't know if you will have sold all the lots in here. In fact, I would I would reckon that you yeah, would have. Yeah, this one would actually be from today. You know, this won't be conditional because it's not a use variance. Yeah, it's not a use. Those are my concerns. Okay. Gentlemen, anyone have any thing that they would like to say on the matter? Chair, I believe. Did you? Did I get everybody? Did I miss somebody? Let's go ahead. I, I, I've got a concern too. Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> Clint Tubby. Um, my concern is that this is almost a zoning issue if you're doing this much this big. That's not really, I don't think that's in the, in the province of the zoning appeals uh, to make that kind of a decision. <clears throat> If this board, and this board has been generally very reasonable about requests for particular circumstances or to accommodate um, needs that come up uh, that are in conformity with the whole good of the community, obviously, that if they could sell a lot and needed a, a little bit different configuration of an adjustment from 30 to 25 or from you know, 25 to 20 or 15 depending upon what where it where it's located I don't I don't think you'd have a problem in getting consensus built to, to do what they needed to do I just think that this by asking this this board is being asked to do something I think that's outside of its it's crazy. Um, that's that's my concern when I saw this and heard about just this evening. Thank you.
Certainly. Do you? Oh, no, I have no comment. I thought you were asking if you can no, comment on no, it. As far as I, I appreciate uh, Councilman Tevi's point, I mean, it is you are sort of changing it. You're not actually changing any of the zoning, but you are making a, a broad sweeping change to a zoning provision, which you're probably right at the end <coughs> of you guys are able to do. It's an interesting approach to trying to get done on a lot of different things at once. I certainly appreciate where Mr. Lee's coming from, but you're probably skating right on the edge. If, if the property were uh, vacated and then uh, wanted to be rezoned, it would go to the planning commission. It would be replatted and be go to the subdivision review. Yeah, you have to go to start over again. Anybody else on the board have anything to say? Anyone? Yes, Charlie. Uh, Gary first pointed out that we could get five five feet off the back, <coughs> but, you know, bring the back part up five feet instead of thirty. Well, I thought that was too much because that's just gives you a place to build a shack and not somebody buy a lot and build a shack in there and not finish it up and stuff like that. So that's why I did that up to 20 feet. And, and I'm sorry, it's Mr. Charles, Charles Lee, right? Yeah. So make sure. <coughs> Anyone else? Any more discussion? If not, I would entertain a motion that we approve the variance for the 17 lots. Motion's been made. Do I have a second, please? Second. <coughs> Motion's been made and seconded to approve the variance for the 17 lots as stated from 25 to 16 on the rear and 30 to 20 feet. John, would you call the roll, please? Kevin? <coughs> no. Steve? No. Jim? No. Roy? No. David? No. Done. Thank you for coming in. Next item is Ms. Libby Caswell, Disability and Autism, Autism Services of Indiana, would like to operate a business at 732 North Broadway in the residential zoning district. Hi, I'm Libby Caswell. Mm -hmm. yeah, I believe you were here once before. I was, with a different, um, same street, but different. Different location. location. Yeah. Um, my brother owned that house at the time, and I currently own the house at 732 North Broadway. And basically, you're wanting to do what you were wanting to do before, and you might refresh our memory on this. Yes, yeah, so <coughs> I'm Executive Director of Disability and Autism <coughs> Service of Indiana. We're an outreach therapy company for children with autism. So we provide ADA therapy and speech therapy in home services, in home um, environments, directly in the homes. And then sometimes we work in schools and also in the community. We have four church locations throughout Indiana right now. Um, but we, so we focus on outreach therapy, but we do have an office in Greenwood, and I currently have an office in St. Paul, it's out of back, the back of my house, and I'm looking to get a place actually in town um, where we can just, we'll have an office manager, um, I think I put on my note up to maybe one to three office staff, and then each of those might be company, you know, with a student. So, and also I put on there small groups, social groups, like on Tuesdays and Thursdays, we'd like to do a language group that is for, um, we actually have ideas for two groups, but basically two to four children at a time. So not large groups of children. And each child is always accompanied by a therapist. Which is an ABA therapist, so a behavioral therapist, essentially. Most of them are licensed teachers, um, social workers, psychology majors. So this isn't a home-based thing. This is this home will be an office. This would be hopefully an office. No one's living there. But then we are 
looking to do a little social, you know, groups a couple days a week. And it wouldn't be constant. It would be like a six week, maybe during the summer, we're looking to do a language group. Um, we're hoping to do a toddler's group. We have a couple little twos and threes year olds in the community. Um, we like to do a group, a little language group for them. Mm -hmm. So up to maybe five people would each have a car. And I, I mean, it looks like there's, we could do whatever in the back. We could put all gravel if we need to and put what it will do, whatever we need to do for parking. There's no outbuildings or anything like that in the back. Anybody else have any questions? Anybody in the audience here to speak on this situation? Yes, Scott. I uh, reviewed uh, Ms. Caswell's business when she was looking at the other one. The only thing I would ask is that if you if you do approve this, that as she does her remodels, that everything meets the building and fire code. As with, um, and again, we've talked about that. Oh, yeah, with, with, um, the emergency lighting and such, as there will be customers in there. So that's all I have. Okay, thank you, Scott. Any other questions from board members or concerns? I must have missed that meeting. What was your discussion? Well, in the other one, in the other location, there was concerns by some of the neighbors, as I recall, yeah. because the alley in the back yeah. had been. People had, that had lived in that house before had cut the corner and drove on property That's other than their own, but it didn't apply to this. They were in a different location now. But that, that was the, the biggest concern at the other location was that some of the neighbors had concerns about the parking. Really, it was the alley in the back. I don't know that that'll be a situation here at this location. This is right. Yes. You said parking for five cars. Up to yes. The students, how will the, the, the students get there? They are either dropped off or they are to meet with the therapist. We have like a non an auto policy, so they're able to transport these clients. Second house off First Street, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I said the wrong one. I'm sorry. And you'd also have two to three employees that why you had the five or six students? That would be probably five or six adults total. Total. Mm -hmm. Then generally, it's going to be by appointment. So generally, there'd be one office member. But then sometimes we have meetings, and there's um, five of us on clinical staff. Yeah, well, she said she'd do whatever. I, I think we need to stress that we have some off the street parking there. I don't know how big that area is, but I, I think that I'd feel more comfortable if you added. If you graveled that and had that available for all yeah, street parking, for you, especially for like your full time, you said there'd be at least one, right, full time. Yeah. So at least that you know, the others. I know that's going to vary, and you, you can't really yeah. say how. Yeah. It'll be safer in the back to park in the back anyway. So yeah. we're, with, we're with perfectly the children happy to put that you in. bringing in, I think it'd just it's be better. Mm -hmm. Have you ever called out anything about parking here in Chip Gary or anything? We haven't yet. Yeah. That's kind of something there. That block's a little, little narrow, and coming in that alley and everything coming in, and if you're going to have some other uh, their classes or whatever, a little bit, the parking right there, close on that corner and everything, that's mm -hmm. that's pretty busy right in there. Uh, what do you think, Gary? You think you have a better drawing or something a little laid out a little bit better? I mean, it's, it's going to be convenience of, of them if they want to double park and back and block each other and it looks like there would be plenty of room for staff to do that. Uh, probably 
two on street parking places in front of the house, although nobody's guaranteed any on, on street spaces. So, um, you know, it's going to be their clients. And, and it's they a have to park session. on the street how far they want to walk. It's a mother session she was talking about, might have, you know, some speech and all that other stuff. Now, then people come there or whatever, like it's parking. There ain't room in front where that's at. That's where the brave man car would park up there or whatever. I, to me, I think the neighbors would be getting upset. Well, that's typically why we do a conditional for a year. Yeah. And see if there's any complaints that come in and then after a year, we, go we haven't there. heard much. We advertise it again and make it permanent parents. But that's why we do it, to see if there's any problems. We want to work with Gary to get as much off street parking as possible. Another ride for a year. Yeah. Yes, Chris, he's the attorney. I don't know that we have to specify because if we get complaints in the year, we're probably not going to grant you the permanent. I mean, it's to your best interest to. Yeah, more spent all the money and everything. Well, but I, I don't think you can actually put that as a condition, other than, um, you know, I suppose you could make it as a conditional variance and add that, you know, prior to issuing, she has to get approval from the fire chief and the, um, and the, the city engineer as to the design and layout of the building and parking. Keep you my, my, my bigger concern is the building and that they're, because they're, if, if anything bad would happen, we want to make sure that the children have it, know how to get out and so do the, mm -hmm. so do the adult staff that's there. I think that's more of my concern that, that everything be done up to code on the inside of the building as far as lighting and fire codes and that. Yeah. And I, I think that would be reasonable to have as a condition. The parking, I'm not so sure. It'd be in her best interest, again, to not want any complaints. Yeah, I mean, I mean, ultimately, you all make valid points. And I'm sure as she's listening to you make those valid points, she's cataloging that, OK, I need to talk to the city engineer and make sure that this isn't going to get anyone to yell at. As to what you are actually allowed to add, into a conditional use variance, um, it's kind of ambiguous. I mean, I think you could add it if you, you know, that the that you meet with the city engineer and determine that there's ample parking. Same way, I think you can add they're both safety concerns. Um, or they both fall under a safety concern to the extent that you want to say a conditional use variance is granted pursuant to with her seeking and obtaining final approval as to building codes and specs fire chief and or adequate parking with the city engineer. Okay. Sure. All right. Any other questions from the audience? Anything else from the board? Then I would entertain a motion that we approve Ms. Caswell's request for operating her business out as a residential area. And again, this is a one-year conditional variance, and if we get complaints, and everybody, you know, so like, like, yeah, you know, with, you'll come back in a year, and everybody will be notified. Mm -hmm. It'll all happen again. I want to ask Scott a question. Scott, mm -hmm. just right in that area, and that's, that's a narrow right there, and the buildings are closed and everything, and I'm looking at a fire deal. Uh, I know you got the front street out there, but it's parking and thing in the back alley back there to help get up or to the house and all and all the cars are parked filling that all in. Like I'm looking at that part that you guys doing your job. Depending on the amount of cars they park in the back, it could become a hindrance. Uh, the alley versus the one she was talking about before, the alley on that side is wider. There is different access into it off of First Street. Uh, they're not allowed to block the alley. Right, they're not, yeah, they, 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 they would not be allowed to block But still, you park right behind that residence and everything, you get the trucks parked back there, they, there's no way they can get out and everything and, and try to get everything in there right. close to do it. That's what I'm looking at. It I, could become a hindrance. Um, I, I, I've been some of the other towns, I've seen some fires and whatever, right. and you, 
can't see it all, but I've seen it was a bear where cars were parked at night or whatever. Because I know they're not going to be there at night time, but I've seen it at night and we can have it in the daytime too. I mean, it, it is a concern, but again, I believe, I know people that lived in that house prior to her <coughs> when you purchased it at this point. Yes. And they parked in the back just in the grass. So, you know, it, it, it's going to be the same issue either way. So, uh, could it be a problem? Yes. Yeah. But. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Once you get the variance, it it's a business. It's a zone. Right. It's a so, so she has to comply with all the rules. Do I have a second? I'll second. Motion has been made and seconded that we approve Ms. Glaswell's request for a variance. <coughs> John, would you call the roll, please? Kevin? No. Dean? Hey. No. Jim? Yes. Roy? Yes. David? Yes. Carried through to two in business. Thank you. Get with Gary and Scott on the other issues and they'll take care of you. I will do. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck in your business. <coughs> Thank you. Are there any other items that need to come before the board? If not, I'll entertain a motion we adjourn. We're done. <clears throat>